Welcome back to the National Defense. It's Randy Miller. You know what? I have done hundreds of interviews over the years. I've never been more excited <laughs> to do this interview than I am with one of my all-time heroes in show business, the man of a thousand voices, master impressionist, Rich Little. Rich, how are you? I'm fine, but I think a lot of your viewers probably don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> if they're younger, yeah. I, I, I got to tell you, uh, you know, uh, everybody in my age group, uh, and, and I've talked about this for days before you came on here, but we all grew up doing impressions of you doing impressions. Huh. And I bet you I had every one of your comedy albums. You had, what, nine? Albums? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So let me get let me get mine out of the way. I'm sure you get this all the time. Look, my 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 Johnny Carson. My I I, I did not know that. Um, uh, not John, Johnny Carson. Johnny uh, Johnny was uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, did you did you hear the news yesterday? John Scobie, the world's greatest crossword puzzle addict, died yesterday. And tomorrow they're they're going to bury him four feet down and six feet across. <laughs> That's a typical Carson joke. That's kind of corny, you know? And, and you you filled in for Carson many times. Yeah, yeah, 23 times. Oh, yeah. wow, wow. And how was, that, how was that experience the first time you filled in for Johnny Carson? Oh, that was terror. I mean, uh, <laughs> when you think about how many viewers he had, right. you know, and filling in for Johnny Carson, there was a lot of pressure there. Right. And you had to really calm yourself down because, you know, that... Uh, that was tough to do, you know, and those Dean Martin roasts were tough to do too. Because oh yeah. They were so popular and you were performing in front of some of the greats of Hollywood. So that and, was and, a lot of pressure. That was a lot of pressure too. Not just record, not, 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 you know, doing the show in front of a lot of greats, making fun of them as you went. I, I mean, I guess I just saw, I rewatched uh, the roast you did of Jimmy Stewart and, oh, yeah. and you were teaching Jimmy Stewart how to do Jimmy Stewart. That's right. <laughs> and then when we finally did it, it was terrible. It was, <laughs> that was, said, that's the worst Jimmy Stewart I've ever heard. And was that that's the first impression you ever did? Yeah, that was the first impression that I ever did. I remember seeing a movie called The Far Country with Jimmy Stewart, a Western. And I came home and I sat down at the dinner table and I asked my mom for a piece of apple pie. <laughs> I want some pie. And then I found out that that was the name of Jimmy's horse, was Pie. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Yeah, oh, he wrote him in all his, all his Western movies. <laughs> We're talking to the legendary Rich Little here on the National Defense. And uh, a, a, another fantastic show that I used to love was the, the one that you were on called The, the Copycats. And oh, yeah. what, a, what a great show that was. How, I mean, groundbreaking. And very unique, a, yeah. a bunch of incredible impressionists. And yeah. did, I mean, that show must have gotten great ratings. Well, hardly anybody remembers it, really. Well, I, I, I tried to find it on YouTube. I can't find anything on YouTube. No, no, I know. There's no record of it anywhere. It was filmed in England, you know. Oh, I did not and, know that. And uh, we had a lot of great impersonators on the show. And we brought a lot of big stars over to do the show. And it was amazing how many big stars we got because they got a chance to do impressions. And it was <laughs> funny to hear like Robert Young do an impression of W.C. Fields, you know, <laughs> it was kind of unique, you know, but Tony Curtis came over. Wow. And Debbie Reynolds and Orson Welles. We had a lot of great people on that show. Another guy that was an impressionist on this show, Frank Gorshin. Uh, yeah, Frank, yeah. What a great talent he was too, right? Great impersonator too. Yeah. What did he do? The, the Joker or the Riddler? He did the Riddler. The Riddler, yeah. 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 Oh, that was so, such a great show. And yeah, another one of my my absolute favorites of yours is Paul Lynn. I mean, he, he's an animal. Oh, oh, God. Paul was funny, wasn't he? he <laughs> it was the way he delivered the line. Right, you know, right. He, he was sucking in a bad lemon, you know? <laughs> and they, some, of the, some of the answers he gave were hysterical, you know? Well, when a man gives a great performance, it's customary to say, bravo, bravo. What do you say when a woman gives a great performance? 
Mind if I smoke? <laughs> <laughs> You know, he couldn't do that show today, could he? I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, you know, today it's a different uh, ball game, isn't it? Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. now you're you're out in uh, Vegas. You're still performing, right? Yeah, I'm performing at the Tropicana Hotel. I've been there seven years. I went. Wow. I went to the Tropicana to do a couple of weeks, and <laughs> here we are, seven years later, and I'm still at the Tropicana, four nights a week. Um, Sunday through Thursday. Wow. That that has to be a great show. How long does the show last? A little over an hour. And, and I show a lot of film clips, you know. Yeah. Um, one thing to do the impression of somebody famous, but when I show me working with them, yeah. um, you know, it, 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 the audience really loves that. And, you know, the, you see me working with George Burns and, and Bob Hope and, uh, Dean Martin, you know, Dean was, Dean was incredible. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to ask you about Dean Martin because, uh, uh, obviously you guys were, were fairly close and, uh, uh, you did a lot of the, the, the celebrity roasts, like you mentioned, uh, did yeah. you, and you, you did a, a Dean Martin, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dean, Dean Martin. Did you hear there was a loud scream in the operating room this morning, and the doctor was heard to say, nurse, nurse, are you an idiot? I told you to take off his spectacles, his spectacles. <laughs> we are talking to Rich Little here of the National Defense. Oh, what? Okay, so born in born in Canada, Ottawa, right? Yeah. I think I, I read where your big break in America came on the Judy Garland show. That's right. That's how, right. How did that happen? 1964. Yeah. How and Mel happen? Torme, the singer, and a couple of Canadian writers who had written me my club act, uh, they were uh, instrumental in getting me on the uh, Judy Garland show. Oh, man. That, I mean, it started my career in the U.S., the Judy what Garland. A, what show. a first show to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I understand. So she, you auditioned for her and, and Mel Torme, and you just broke her up. Well, the thing is, Mel Torme and I um, did a variety show in Toronto, and he told me he was going to be doing special material for the Judy Garland show. Hmm. And he said, I want to put you on the show or see if I can get you on the show. So I put a lot of my impressions on the tape, and then he took it over to Judy Garland's place hmm. and played her at the tape oh. and hoping to get me on the show. But Judy didn't uh, want to hear the tape. She <laughs> said, now, what do you hear this? She said to Mel, Mel, I don't like impersonators. They make me fart. They make me fart? That's what she said to Mel. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? What? That little girl from Kansas said that. <laughs> right. When he said, well, just listen to a few of his impressions. And <laughs> she reluctantly did. And when I did my impression of James Mason, who made a movie with her, Star is Born. That was the clincher to get me on the Judy Garland show. James Mason. That is great. Well, I saw you do a, a Joe Biden the other day. Yeah, I, I, I'm doing Joe Biden. It's a, he's sort of Mr. Magoo, isn't he? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with Joe Biden. I don't think the liberals are too uh, happy about that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go after all presidents, you know, I, yeah, I, absolutely. I, I mean, you did them all. Reagan. Reagan and Jimmy you actually, Carter. You actually, and you actually look Bush. a little bit like Ronald Reagan now. Has anybody well, told you that? Well, well, you know, rich does me <laughs> so good that I thought when I passed away, they should have buried him. <laughs> did, you did you ever do Ronald Reagan? Did you ever do a Don Adams? I'm Adams talking to your shoe. Uh, <laughs> not really, but um, uh, yeah, he was popular back in the get smart days. Well, yeah. and, and you were and rich. You were on all those shows. You are petticoat junction. Yeah. I mean, all I, of those I was looking up the other day and, um, and I, I, I added up that I was on um, 85 different uh, television shows wow. Wow. in my career. 85. That's gonna be, it's going to be a record. Everything from the Flying Nun to Love American Style to oh my God to the Boston Pops, you know, well, and, a lot of shows. And then um, I saw your piece on CBS Sunday Morning. Uh, I guess about a couple of years ago. 
year and a half ago. And you yeah. were talking about a play that you were doing, right? Yeah, I, I, I did a play uh, last summer um, uh, called um, Trial on the Potomac about the, um, uh, the Nixon um, you know, right. scandal and how he resigned and everything. And it's a very interesting play. It's not a comedy. It was a drama. And I did it in New York during the pandemic, and um, it didn't do that well because nobody nobody was going out. Nobody's but going out to theater, sure. Pretty, yeah. pretty good show, yeah. you know, but COVID killed it, really. Wow. And and that was something that you, you wrote? No, I didn't write it. No, no, no. Um, but now you, it, yeah. you always wrote your own material, right? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. In my act, yeah, I write all my own material, yeah. But that was written by Jeff Shepard, who was worked with Nixon way back in the early days. What was it like working with Don Rickles? Don Rickles, to me, was the funniest man that ever lived. Yeah. Once you accept the fact that he's just putting you on and having fun. Right. If you're sensitive, you know, um, you didn't like him, right. you know, and a lot of people didn't like <laughs> him. Because yeah, right. He didn't understand him. Yeah. You know, uh, but he was the fastest comedian that uh. ever lived. I mean. When he would deliver a line, he was thinking about not only the next line he was going to give, but the one after that. <laughs> I got to see how, how fast he was. Oh, the only other person I could think was as fast as Don Rickles was, um, was um, uh, Robin Williams. Well, yeah, I was going to say Jonathan Winters, which was... Uh, Jonathan Winters. Yeah. They, they were pretty quick, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, got to, I, got to, was, uh, I got to Don see Rickles, Rickles yeah. about two years before he died, yeah. uh, just outside of Vegas. And... He still had every bit of it, every bit of it. Yeah. Well, at the end, you know, I saw him a couple of months before he passed away at the uh, Orleans in Vegas, and he was sitting in a chair because he couldn't walk, you know. Yeah. And um, he just sat in a chair and um, the audience just loved him. So even though he wasn't really that funny because, you know, it was nearing the end, they still they still applauded and laughed like crazy. And uh, he was one of the greats. Yeah, one of the old absolutely family. one of the greats. We're talking to Rich Little here in the National Defense. Um, did did you, if I recall, uh, did you do a Fred McMurray? Oh, Fred McMurray of my three sons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did Fred McMurray. <laughs> um, Fred McMurray had that kind of a voice, you know. <laughs> and um, I got to know him a little bit too. He was a big fan of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and uh, I used to see him when I used to go and see Reagan at the White House, and he would. He was usually there, you know. It's amazing. Back in the 60s, when I, you know, first started to make some uh, some headway in show business, um, all the uh, movie stars were Republicans. Huh. And, I, I, I and thought were about that. Yeah. 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 And and a lot of them had, uh, had been in the military. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's... I remember going to a party at Richard Nixon's place in San Clemente. And all of Hollywood was there. Wow. It was amazing. And Debbie Reynolds threw me at the back of Richard Nixon and yelled out, uh, Mr. President, Rich is going to do you. <laughs> and he thought for a minute that meant I was going to kill him. <laughs> he turned around and I started to do my Nixon in front of him. And as I'm doing my Nixon in front of, of uh, Richard Nixon, he turned to his wife, Pat, and said, why is this young man speaking in this strange voice? <laughs> didn't even understand that you were. No, doing... he didn't know I was doing it. <laughs> but I thought I did him pretty good at that uh, that little party because when it was over, uh, Pat went home with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> well, now when you when you uh, don't let it slide here that you went to visit Ronald Reagan at the White House. What talk about that a second? Well, I was very privileged to get to know him, and I even had um, had tea with uh, he and Nancy up in his private quarters at oh, the wow. White House. Wow. And I was honored to be up there, you know. Yeah. And um, they were always very, very nice to me. Nancy was very, very nice to me. And Reagan, he just got such a kick out of me doing, imitating him, you know. Great sense and, of humor. Uh, great sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. Great sense of humor. Me I remember... He did an impression of Truman Capote for me. Remember Truman Capote? Oh, you mean Truman Capote? Truman Capote, yes. And I gave him a line to use because he said, Rich, I I do Truman Capote, but I, <laughs> I, 
I don't know what to say. And I gave him a line. And I said to him, well, Mr. President, you can say, my name is Truman Capote. And a lot of people think that I wrote in cold blood, but that's not true. Actually, I wrote in ink. <laughs> and he did the impression for he you? He loved that. It ah. was so cool. But he loved that. He wrote that down on the back of a Secret Serviceman. That's he wrote so the funny. joke down. That's so funny. And, and then he, you know what he said to me? <laughs> I can't wait to try that out on Gorbachev. <laughs> Could you imagine oh the president of the United States doing Trump supporting for Gorbachev? <laughs> no, I would have given a year's salary to You're see right. that. Yeah. yeah. We, we're talking to the legendary Rich Little here on the National Defense. And Rich, as I, as I explained, uh, most of our audience is active duty military veterans and their families. And you said you've done a USO tour. Well, I've done a, a few things for, for, for the troops, you know, in my past. I can't really remember what, but, um, um, you know, and then uh, all the merchandise that I sell after my show, not lately because of uh, COVID, but in the past, um, I s used to sell all my tapes and, um, and my drawings and, uh, and everything, and then all the money went to the troops. Oh, that's fantastic. The and, Gary and Sinise Foundation. And, and, oh, the Gary Sinise Foundation. Absolutely. Oh, that, that's the best place to send your money, really. Absolutely. We've had Gary on the show many times. He's a great, great American. He's a great guy and yeah. a great American and does a lot for our troops. It would be We're tough to do a it. Gary Sinise. It'd be tough mm -hmm. to do a Gary Sinise. No, I can't do a Gary Sinise. <laughs> what about, um, what would Bob Hope, think about you selling merchandise for the troops. Bob Hope. <laughs> Rich, that's that's great. You know, you're selling all this junk to the troops, you know. <laughs> and um, too bad you're not, you're not making any money. <laughs> anyway, gang, I got to tell you. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Man, this is such a blast. We do a, a regular segment on the show, Rich, called Got Your Six. It's six rapid-fire questions. But I'm going to ask them to all different people. Oh, boy. <laughs> what do you got in the cup there, Rich? Um, just um, um, uh, coffee. What is it? Coffee. Coffee. A mocha. Ah. Yeah. All right. I like to, that latte, really. To, to Johnny Carson, what was your favorite thing about Ed McMahon? Ah. But he didn't take over from Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to uh, to Joe Biden, uh, what is your favorite room in the White House? The basement. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, Howard Cosell, what are your thoughts about Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali was one of the all-time greats. My thoughts about Muhammad Ali, I can't remember who he is. <laughs> <laughs> to Paul Lynn, what are your thoughts on TV these days, Paul? Oh, it's disgusting. The filth that's on TV. We should get a maid in the dust. <laughs> <laughs> and Ronald Reagan, what was your favorite thing? You had a lot of things on the ranch. What was your favorite thing to ride? Uh, Bonzo. <laughs> 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 and Carol Channing, can you just sing one for us? Carol Channing. Um, I, a kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh, isn't that marvelous? <laughs> ah, Rich Little. This has made my year already, and it's just January. Man, it's been su such a treat. You got a book coming out? Yeah, yeah, I've, 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 I'm re-releasing it. I, I put it. I, it came out about five years ago, and I've re-released it in a couple of new chapters and a new cover. And it's called "People I Have Known and Been." <laughs> Get it on Amazon.com. Is that Groucho up there? And a lot of my sketches are in here. You know, I'm. Oh, I, that's I, right. I, that's right. I was going to ask you about your sketches. Oh yeah, I do a lot of a lot of drawings. There's one of my all-time favorites, Gregory. <laughs> and that's your drawing? Yeah, all, that's fantastic. all these are my drawings. Wow. Uh, so everybody I talk about in the book, I did, I did, uh, I did a drawing of, and uh, there, there's Carol, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's excellent. Wow. And I, you know, so everybody I talk about, uh, and it's not a biography, it's, it's uh, you know, just 
you know, interesting things that have happened and funny things that have happened with me and celebrities down sure. through the years. But it's oh, a, man. it's kind of a fun book, you know. And, and I knew can, Robert Goulet. Do you remember Bob? Oh Goulet? yeah, sure. Yeah, great guy. Did you now? Did you? Uh, is that book available everywhere? Yeah, yeah. Pick it we, up. We don't on have to come Amazon. to Las Vegas. Com. We don't have to come to Las Vegas and get it. No, no, I don't <laughs> think it's in the bookstores. But if you ask for it, they may. They may get it. I don't know. You know, we're based in Kansas City, Missouri, and our our Chiefs were just in in Vegas. Right. Yeah. That's true. Big, now, do you follow football? Yeah, I do. I do uh, watch a lot of football. You know, I'm not rooting for anybody. But, right. Um, I'm not a big Raider fan, but uh, yeah, good for you. Rowdy people there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they, <laughs> right. And every every time I go to the Tropicana on a Sunday, I I have to leave an hour earlier. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's okay to hate the Raiders. I mean, you know. <laughs> hey rich it's been such a pleasure man thank you so much for taking the time uh just an honor to talk to you and what uh, you just uh, you've been so entertaining in my life for so many years so thank you Andy, i appreciate that we'll be right back here in the national defense